Hey guys, this is Zane Goodwin with Goodwin Luxury Homes. We are a design build firm located in both Los Angeles and Atlanta metros. And we're here today at our Cherry Tree Modern. Let's check out some amazing framing details. So first off would be, this is a massive cantilever. This detail of being unsupported at your corner is you know, something that is way out of the ordinary and what kind of makes moderns moderns is this cantilever. Um, so this is like a roughly 15 foot unsupported corner. If you check up up close, you can see we have double 16 inch LVLs with five eighths inch uh, steel flitch plates in between all bolted together as an assembly. Um, they're attached at the corner to support themselves. And then if you follow them, they run, gosh, about 35 feet. Uh, connected back at this next LVL in the center of the house and then also at this corner. And then this one follows all the way through and uh, re-supports itself throughout that wall system. So in the center section, which is, I guess, theoretically a dog trot area or breezeway, uh, this is kind of the open space where you can see all of the structure and how it's kind of ultimately carrying that cantilever. So if we check out here, this LVL beam set is a four wide 16 inch deep LVLs with three steel flitch plates. And this, between this wall and this wall over here that is the hanging out by itself foundation uh, stem wall, between these two are the main two load areas for this whole system over here. So the system above our head actually goes above the garage over here and kind of floats out. So you have two separate uh, structures really. Another really cool detail is these gigantic windows behind me and, and how they're double set on top of each other. So traditionally you would have a, a super large uh, LVL or structural member, maybe even steel on top of this to be able to support the load down through from the roof. But as you can see up on top, we still have this all open because this is, a, this is gonna be wood soffited or a, uh, you know, actually good looking wood soffit and up there you'll see there's only an eye joist so let's go check out how it's supported normally this whole roofing system would be loaded on these exterior walls in this situation where we have this big open room and again as you can see there's only an eye joist above that window and so actually what's happening here is we have a uh, LVL set here that cantilevers out, as you can see through the window. And then also on the opposite side, uh, a, a cantilever that runs out to that corner. And it's capturing this whole roof system and not loading it here. So it's loading down through this interior wall and through that interior wall down to that LVL, which then brings it to the exterior. So we're transferring the load that would normally sit on top of this window as there's not weight above the first set of windows, there is weight from those windows above here. So again, carrying this weight across here through this LVL into these interior walls. Continuing down the path of where does the load go with these big open spans, rather it's LVLs or some type of structural steel, at the end of it, it needs to be supported and that weight directed down into the foundation. So always on plans, you're going to find um, it's specified by the structural engineer of what the column needs to be that holds up these big beams. In this case, it is a five wide two by six, you know, clamped together through both nailing and then also structural screws holding this all together to make, make this act as a single piece of wood column. Um, depending on like loads that is calculated, you could also end up with a column that is, in this case, it's a PSL. This is more or less a LVL that is one piece altogether. Um, generally speaking, a, a, a one piece material, even if it's a, a dimensional six by six, in this case, it's a PSL uh, six by six, is going to act stronger than us, you know, tying them all together. Um, so these are the different options and in structural plan sets, you'll always have those end columns specified by the structural engineer of which the framers have to build together and or have very specific members holding everything up. All right, so at this point, I feel like this detail should be standard in the industry, but for some reason it's not, so we'll point it out as well, which is um, these are called California corners. They do a couple things. Um, one, it gives backing for drywall, but two, it allows insulation to get back and all the way to that corner. So you can imagine if this wall and this wall came together and in this wall you have you know, a perpendicular piece of wood and you had a perpendicular piece of wood there, 
unless you're getting the framer to be the insulator and put insulation back there before they put these two walls together, you have this, you know, open corner here where there is no insulation. We also have uh, natural insulation already uh, going and supporting a little family here. So for our sheathing, we always use Huber Zip system. Um, it, it is primarily for the purpose of, of air sealing. Um, high performance homes, the, the first path of energy loss is through air. So first and foremost, our goal is to make the home as airtight as possible. Most states, they have a requirement of five air changes an hour. And what that is explained is, is if we pressurized this whole house uh, with uh, what's called a blower door that they literally put on the front door and pressurize the house to a, a measurement called 50 pascals. And then you can track through that how many CFM are leaking through the envelope of the house. And for us, we, our goal is under one ACH 50 and then, and more specifically about half of that under five ACH 50 or lower. And that is our first combatant to it's hot outside and it's cold inside, uh, during the summer or vice versa. And it's hot inside, cold outside. And you know, it's trying to bleed out. So we, we mitigate that as our first step. Second step is most of our homes are using Zip Systems uh, R sheathing, as you can see here. This is specifically Zip R3. So it has a half inch of insulation on it. And that's our first step to getting rid of now conduction of if this member or this stud was touching to wood sheathing on the outside, that's a direct easy path for cold to come in or, uh, or I guess really for hot to come in or hot interior to go out. Um, hot always goes to, to cold, not vice versa. Um, so by having this insulation now on the outside, it substantially mitigates that ability for the uh, hot outside or hot inside to travel through these wood members that are generally fairly low in our value. One thing special about this house is the flat roof it is done more like a commercial roof as opposed to a traditional residential flat roof. And how residential flat roofs are typically built is you will have basically wall extensions um, up above the wall and then you'll slope so it won't be a true flat roof. You'll have a very low slope and they'll capture the water from the top of it through scuppers down through exterior gutters. In this home built uh, much more like a commercial system, we have roof drains. So this roof actually slopes down to the center. So we didn't have to have tall uh, parapet walls. And the reason for that is this roof line or, or the top of the house is maxing out the maximum height of uh, like the zoning requirements, our zoning allowance. So we couldn't build any higher. So this was the solution to being able to max out that total height that is allowed by zoning. And so it drains down and through. So on the far side of the house, there's one there and there's a total of four that run across the center of this roof. So we're capturing all of that water, bringing it into these two PVC pipes that you see here and coming down and through, and then we're bringing it out to the rear corner that ultimately goes out to a underground, what is more or less a septic tank for that gray water to uh, get into the ground system, as opposed to putting it in the creek and uh, you know, potentially flooding downstream neighbors. So something that's part of framing, but not really part of framing is uh, you know, preparation for doors and windows. So those rough openings. Um, we always get the framers to put in the pocket door frames. So pocket door frames can be very inexpensive. They can be a hundred dollars and uh, ask me why you shouldn't use those later. Uh, and we've gotten to the places where we use uh, pocket door frames that are roughly about a thousand dollars, depending on the opening. Um, and we specifically use HD pocket doors. Um, they're amazing. We specifically use the ones that are soft open and soft close. So, you know, this frame and rail up here, when you open it and close it, you'll see that it uh, is pulling in nice and slow. So you imagine if a door is hung off of that as it's coming in, it'll be a, a slow pull in, it stops and slow pull into the actual uh, trim there. And same thing when you open. So it just gives that extra touch of, of this luxury feel. Um, another huge thing is that it is, uh, you know, pretty stout steel frame of it, as you can see, like, it's nice and tough and it comes with its own LVL header. Um, so it's just a very robust system and you don't have to worry about, you know, shooting a nail through 
that wall. It's a whole system dedicated to you know, a good pocket door. So traditionally in shower systems, um, you'll have a curb around it that basically makes this like a very small tub. Uh, and so water here, not water there. But uh, the newest kind of look of the last 10 years, especially in modern homes, modern, modern homes, is you will have a zero entry shower. Um, there's a couple ways of executing that. In this case, um, the distance from the edge of the uh, shower pan to the drain is less than three feet. You need to slope a quarter inch per foot. And in this case, we're, we're less than that. Um, so all we had to do is drop down that three quarters of an inch. And in this scenario, the reason that we actually did that, it has more to do with this, uh, this LVL beam pack where um, it couldn't really go smaller with how much load it was holding. So this couldn't have been another foot bigger this way because then we, we couldn't meet the minimum slope requirements. If your shower pan is going to be larger and you have a much larger shower, that is perfectly fine. You'll just have to have a engineered solution of having a much smaller floor system. So if this is a 16 inch eye joist in this case, we could have stepped down to a 14 inch eye joist and worked around with the, uh, the engineer. But again, this was our control point and this was the size that we could make it based on that. Number one purpose again for zip system for us is keeping water out. Secondarily, keeping air out. You know, is number one way to get sued as a builder is have water intrusion. Uh, you're not going to be called at three o'clock in the morning and say, hey, my air is leaking or the, the wall system is leaking, but they will call you if uh, water gets in, right? So secondarily is, is air. Uh, again, when we get into the energy side of this, we want to block all of that air out and and mitigate inside from outside and have its own climate zone inside separate from what outside's doing. We all want to be comfortable ultimately. Um, so in a traditional uh, house wrap system, when you have a house wrap on here that is getting rid of that water, generally speaking, your panel edges and even your bottom is not taped at all. Uh, and that's so it can drain that water out if water gets behind the, um, behind the water barrier or water resistive barrier. Um, so in our situation, we tape and or liquid flash the connection between the framing and the foundation. In this situation, because we are going to be using a uh, finished, you know, stucco finish on the bottom of this or a parge coat on the bottom of this foundation, we used Sigafentrum. Sigafentrum is really cool in that it gives us that air seal across the bottom and keeps water out, so it checks those boxes, but is also uh, a felt kind of finish. It's a fuzzy finish. And if you parge coat this and have, you know, some type of Portland cement uh, mixture and you came up to a, you know, a slick tape, it's not want to grab into that. And this, this finish of this, having that fuzzy finish allows that concrete to grab into there and stay nice and stout. So that's wrapping up the frame portion of the, our Cherry Modern. Uh, if you like and want to see more videos talking about performance of homes and luxury details, please comment below and subscribe.